Hey what's going on everyone this is Ari Views back with another video and today I will show you guys 10 tips that will help you speed up any slow iPhone. This is especially important for older devices. If you have an older iPhone and you feel like it's running slower than it should, then these tips and tricks will make sure that it runs much, much smoother. Now, another thing that you need to make sure is that you leave a like on this video. It helps out a lot, so make sure you smash that like button. All right, the first thing you will need to do is go to your settings and go to Siri and search. Now on your iPhone, of course, all the time you will get suggestions from Siri. Now that's Siri all the time, learning from apps and working in the background. So what you will find here is of course, Siri suggestions. So you will find suggestions while searching, on lock screen, on home screen, and when sharing. You can of course leave these enabled or disabled, but right here you will find a list of all the apps that you have on your device. Now Siri is always learning in the background from these apps. So if I go to one of these, you can see here, it has like a button that says learn from this app and then show suggestions from app, suggest app, show in app, app in search and all that. So all these apps that you have on your device, Siri is always working with them and learning from those apps. Of course, there might be apps that are not really that important to you, but of course they will consume CPU power on your device. Every time you're doing something, Siri is basically suggesting from different apps and stuff like that. So make sure you go ahead and take a look at this list right here and disable all the different switches here for the apps that you don't actually care about. A huge thing when it comes to iPhone performance is always having enough free space. If you're always running low on space on your device, your device will not run as it should. I suggest that you have at least 20% of the storage on your iPhone free all the time. Now what you can do about this is of course go to general and go to iPhone storage and right here we'll find a list of all your apps and your stuff that you have on your iPhone and you can see whichever is taking more space on your device. So you can see right here all the different apps and you can see how much space they're taking on the device. Now you will see right here things like these apps that are actually taking a lot of space and you can maybe delete them or just delete them and reinstall them. That way you will delete your data. You will also find recommendations right here like delete the recently album and all of that. So you can see right here, I have podcast. Now, if I go here, it shows me all the different episodes that I have actually downloaded on the device. I can go ahead and just tap edit here and delete them from here. Now, just don't keep these episodes. You can, of course, always just listen to them offline. Oh, uh, sorry, online. Now, if we go back, another thing you can do about this is go to your camera settings. And when you go to your camera, make sure that you choose the right formats to take less space on your device. Now, if you go to formats right here, you will find high efficiency, make sure you choose this, the photos will be much, much smaller. And also don't use Apple Pro Raw, that will take a lot of space. And when you go to record video, now this is important here, so if you choose 4K, 60 frames per second, this will be the biggest file, like one minute, it will take like 400 megabytes. Now, if you're just watching your videos on your iPhone and nowhere else, especially if you have an older iPhone, I suggest you just shoot at 1080p. Basically, you won't notice the difference if you're just watching the videos on your device. And of course, if you have a 4K monitor and all that, then it's cool, you can go to 4K, but if you're just watching them on your iPhone, you can save a ton of space by just recording at 1080p. Now with iOS 14, we have now a new redesigned section on the settings app. It is called App Store. If you go here, you will find apps and app updates. And you will also have here automatic downloads on cellular data. All of these basically will happen automatically if you have these enabled. Now, if you have an older device and let's say you're performing a task or maybe playing a game or something like that, and these are working automatically in the background, apps are being downloaded or updated and installed. Of course, that will take CPU power, will probably heat up your device and you won't have such a good experience because your device will slow down as it heats up. So make sure you go ahead and turn these off. And then of course you can just update your apps whenever you need to manually. Of course, don't leave them without being updated update them, but just do that man manually whenever you have free time or you're not doing anything else on your device. Now here is a thing that has been a myth for years and of course 
there's a lot of controversy whether you should do it or not according to apple and of course they probably are the people we should listen to in this case you should not close apps from the app switcher now here i have apps on the app switcher if i just open them they're right there where i left them and i can just go on and continue from here if i close this app it will basically start the app from the beginning the iphone will have to reload completely the app that way it takes much more cpu power and of course it will take way way longer so the apps that you use daily probably your social media stuff like that you probably use all of these apps all the time during the day don't close them from the app switcher leave them there your iphone will manage them and you will have them ready to go whenever you need them now something really important when it comes to your iphone's performance as well as battery life and data consumption is notifications notifications will actually destroy your iphone not just not actually physically destroy your iphone but they take a lot of cpu power a lot of battery and of course they will light up the screen all the time and, and it will also consume a lot of data you need to really manage your notifications the right way you can see what i have here i have all notifications turned off for apps that i don't need notifications like i have wallpaper apps i don't need notifications from wallpaper apps whenever i want to get a new wallpaper i go into the app and that's it so make sure you manage your notifications the right way don't have notifications coming in all the time on your iphone make sure you go to settings go to notifications and choose here for which apps you want to have notifications on and make sure as i said leave them on only for apps that you need to a new thing with ios 14 is of course the home screen widgets now here i have a bunch of them now basically i have added these right here just for the looks here on the video rip to dmx so basically what you're doing if you add a ton of different widgets you're causing your iphone to consume way more cpu power these widgets will refresh in the background of course they will maybe some of them even use your location as you can see for the weather or stuff like that so if you keep a ton of different widgets enabled on your device they will consume cpu power and battery as well so what you need to do is always of course make sure you check these out and just choose the ones that you actually need and are useful to you and don't just leave a bunch of widgets enabled on the home screen and of course something we do daily on our iphone is browse the internet and of course on your iphone you probably do that with safari now safari will run much much slower if you have a ton of tabs opened on safari so what you need to do is actually make sure that you manage your tabs on safari just close them don't leave like hundreds of different tabs open in the background now with ios 13 apple has included a new feature which is actually really useful you go to settings you go to safari and from here you can actually choose to automatically close the tab so if you go under the tab section right here you will have closed tabs and you can choose here after one day one week or one month i suggest you do that every day if you use safari a lot then do that every day every day you don't actually need to care about the tabs that you have opened in the background and of course if you need them you will find them on your history but this will automatically close them so you don't have to do that manually another thing that you need to make sure to do on safari is of course regularly delete website data and all the cookies and all that stuff that will help out your experience a lot with using safari so go to safari and of course go here under clear history and website data and you can clear the history and data all at once from here just by tapping clear history and data what you can do is also go to advanced and go to website data here we'll find data for different websites that you visit and of course you can delete them one by one manually from here we'll have an edit button and from here just go ahead and choose whichever you want to actually delete and just you can swipe like this and delete any one of them you can also see here how much data they have on your device the next step is really important for older devices if you have an older device you know that all the animations of ios will make it very hard for the device to run ios what you can do is go to your settings and under here motion you can go ahead and enable reduce motion 
what this does of course it just disables all the different animations from your device you will have this really smooth animation when going in and out of apps and stuff like that but of course that will help your device a lot it's really really important that you do this and of course disable stuff that you don't actually need and that will of course help your device do much much better and last but not least is rebooting your device do this regularly reboot your device every once in a while every few days make sure you reboot your device now you can do a force reboot simply by pressing volume up volume down and holding the side button until you see the apple logo and then just release the button and wait for your device to boot up that's of course the best way to reboot your device and make sure that your device will run much much smoother so that is it for this video guys i hope you guys enjoyed the video leave a like if you did and also don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this and i'll see you on the next one